Hi, this is Miles Maria, the soldier of Mary. In this video, I want to look at the claim that Medjugorje is a continuation of Fatima, that the message of Our Lady of Medjugorje is a continuation of the message Our Lady began and revealed at Fatima. A lot of apparitions actually claim to be a continuation of Fatima. There was obviously something amazing about Fatima, and everyone recognizes this. So many places where Our Lady has allegedly appeared, Our Lady herself, or the followers of that apparition, say, oh, this is the continuation of the message of Fatima. I guess it's a bit like how if you're trying to sell a book, you sometimes try and say, well, if you like this book, try this one. Or the same with films or whatever, food products even. If you like this one, then you'll also like this one. And so people try and say, Fatima was fantastic. Everyone knows Fatima was fantastic, awesome. This apparition, it's like Fatima. It's like Fatima 2.0. If you like Fatima, you are gonna love this. And you know, maybe it's fair that there will be a continuation of the message of Fatima. Maybe I'm being a bit too harsh on the principle that there isn't gonna be a continuation of Fatima. I'm actually doing a series of the continuation of Fatima. And this episode, I'm looking at Medjugorje. So I thought to myself, first of all, let's give some evidence supporting the claim that Medjugorje is the continuation of Fatima. Now, the first thing that sprung to my mind was the location of the apparitions and the context. We remember Our Lady at Fatima said, Russia will spread her errors. She was talking about communism, and the atheistic ideas of Russia spreading around the world. And where did Our Lady appear in the apparitions at Medjugorje? She appeared in the Soviet Union, or at least that is when the apparitions began. So in one sense, we could say, Fatima, Our Lady warns that Russia is going to spread her errors. Then Medjugorje, uh, uh, Russia has spread her errors. And Our Lady is now appearing in a place that is under the influence of the errors of Russia. That kind of makes sense. You know, that kind of makes sense as a continuation of the message of Fatima. Another aspect of continuation is Our Lady originally appeared to children, just like at Fatima. She appeared to children and the children began praying the rosary, just like at Fatima. They prayed the rosary when Our Lady appeared. So that's like Fatima. At Medjugorje, we're told that there have been solar miracles, miracles of the sun. We're told at Medjugorje, there have been healings, conversions, all these things that have taken place at Fatima. So maybe those things make Medjugorje a continuation of Fatima. Well, in this set of videos, I'm going to look at the message because ultimately, Ultimately, the thing that defines whether an event is a continuation of Fatima is whether the message is the same. And the reason I'm saying this is in terms of, in terms of praying the rosary, in terms of good confessions, in terms of conversions, those things happen in Catholicism full stop. Those things happen when people go on pilgrimages to the Holy Land. Those things happen when you go on a retreat. Those things happen if you're a young person, you, you go on some Catholic youth conference. I mean, in my life, I was converted through going to a Catholic youth conference. So there are many things where these wonderful Marian devotions happen, where conversion happens. And I don't think that it's right to say that those things are a continuation of Fatima. I think that what makes something a continuation of Fatima is going to be the message, the key points of the message. And so what I've done is I have lined up a set of principles, set of points that I consider to be the message of Fatima. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fundamental principles of the Fatima apparitions, the message of Our Lady of Fatima. And what I'm going to do in this video and in subsequent videos about other apparitions is look at how that second apparition compares to Fatima. So we can see to what extent that apparition continues the message of Fatima. I think there's a good methodology. If you think there's a better one, let me know in the comments. So I'm going to run through the seven principles 
of Fatima. Okay, first principle or feature of the message of Fatima, devotion to the Immaculate Heart. No one can deny this. When you're asked what is the principal element of the Fatima message, look at what Our Lady herself said. I have come here to establish devotion in the world to my Immaculate Heart, or God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. He wants to put the Immaculate Heart alongside the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ. Sinners will be converted if there is devotion to Immaculate Heart. You have seen hell, the place where poor sinners go to save them. God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. Devotion to Immaculate Heart is essential, is core to the message of Fatima. So how does devotion to the, to the Immaculate Heart f- compare at Medjugorje? And I'm using a concordance to, to tell me about this. And actually, the Immaculate Heart is mentioned at Medjugorje. Initially, when I was beginning this video, I thought to myself the Immaculate Heart had never been mentioned at Medjugorje, or very rarely, but I was wrong. The Immaculate Heart has been mentioned 28 times at Medjugorje. There are 1,500 messages at Medjugorje, but 28 of them feature the Immaculate Heart. And some of them are pretty beautiful. In 1988, Our Lady at Medjugorje says, I am inviting you to the consecration of my Immaculate Heart. I want you to consecrate yourselves as parents, as families, as parishioners, so that all belong to God through my heart. Again, in 1997, Our Lady says, especially, I call all those who have consecrated themselves to my Immaculate Heart to become an example to others. And then the most recent, 2013, she says, consecrate your hearts to me and I will lead you. That last one, she doesn't say a macular heart, but it's clear what she's referring to. So there is a mention of the Immaculate Heart at Medjugorje. But even the followers of Medjugorje admit that this is not the central element of the message of Medjugorje, even though it certainly was the central message of Our Lady's apparitions at Fatima. Interestingly, there's no mention of reparation to the Immaculate Heart at Medjugorje, and there's no mention of the five first Saturdays. And indeed, I've put the Commune of Reparation on the five first Saturdays as number four on the list of the key principles of Fatima, because, right, that is a key feature of the message of Fatima, that we are to make a communion of reparation. And in fact, Our Lady doesn't mention reparation in any of her messages at Medjugorje. She doesn't mention five first Saturdays at Medjugorje. She doesn't mention the idea of making up for offences committed against the Immaculate Heart in any way. So these two features, principles of Fatima, are definitely, well, the first one, devotion to the Immaculate Heart, it's there, but it's smaller. So a kind of half point for that one. Five first Saturdays, no, there's there's no continuation of that at Medjugorje. Okay, moving down the list. At Fatima, a very key principle of Fatima was Russia spreading her errors, but that eventually Russia would be consecrated to her Immaculate Heart, and then it would be converted. Now, this one, does this feature at Medjugorje? Well, Russia is mentioned one occasion at Medjugorje, and this is going back to 1981, really early on. In fact, these really early on messages are slightly, not dubious, that they're less secure because they are recorded in the notes of Father René Laurentin. They aren't recorded by the Medjugorje Pilgrimage Bureau or by some officials in Medjugorje. Father Laurentin kind of jotted them down in notebooks and stuff. But anyway, in 1981, Our Lady is said to have told the children, Russia, it, when she's asked about Russia, she says, it is the people where God will be most glorified. The West has made civilization progress, but without God, as if they were their own creators. So, okay, Our Lady is saying that Russia, the Russian people, is the people where God will most be glorified. And then she kind of has a dig at the West, you know, and how the West has made it 
thinks it's in charge, thinks it's its own creator. So she has a little dig to, I guess, the US and, and Western Europe. But she says Russia is a people where God will be most glorified. And supporters of the continuity between Fatima and Medjugorje say Our Lady here in 1981 is making a veiled reference to the conversion of Russia. It's the people where God will be most glorified. But that's all we have of consecration of Russia, conversion of Russia, persecution of the church by and the world by Russia. That's all we have at Medjugorje. So I kind of think that that and in fact this is something that really could have been mentioned at Medjugorje. Our Lady could have, if she had intended Medjugorje to be a continuation of the message of Fatima, she could have been saying things like, Can you see my children? Russia continues to spread her error. I long for the day in which Russia will be consecrated and will be converted and will become an instrument of great holiness in the world. But she never mentions that. You know, it's strange. Maybe all this adds credence to the messages of Medjugorje. Maybe because we would expect a message being a continuation of Fatima to deal with the same subjects. I don't know. Okay, the next one then. Pray the rosary every day. Pray the rosary every day. At Fatima, Our Lady mentioned that at every apparition. She mentioned it seven times. Every apparition, rosary, pray the rosary every day. Sometimes she said pray the rosary for peace. Sometimes she said for the conversion of sinners. Sometimes she said pray the rosary in honor of Our Lady of the rosary. So for kind of different motives. But she always said pray the rosary every day. At Medjugorje, I know people pray the rosary at Medjugorje. I know it. I've been to Medjugorje. I've seen people praying the rosary there and it's beautiful. But in terms of the messages, which is what I'm looking at, Our Lady only says pray the rosary 24 times at Medjugorje. Okay, and, and, and if I'm saying numbers that are different from my previous video on the messages of Medjugorje, it's because I found another concordance website, which I think is more generous to Medjugorje, because it includes these messages that Father René Laurentin observed in the early years. So maybe in this video, some of my uh, citations, my numbers are going to be a bit higher. So Pray the Rosary comes across 24 times at Medjugorje. There's one I really liked that happened in 1997. Our Lady said, I call all priests and religious, brothers and sisters, to pray the rosary and to teach others to pray. The rosary, little children, is especially dear to me. Through the rosary, open your heart to me and I'll be able to help you. Thank you for having responded to my call. In 97, she said that. And then in 2019, the most recent one on the rosary, she said in September 2019, Dear children, pray, pray the rosary every day. But indeed, the message, pray the rosary every day, this 2019 one, is the only time she uses those exact words, pray the rosary every day every day. Whereas at Fatima, at every message, she said, pray the rosary every day. And that makes me think that even if people are praying the rosary at Medjugorje, the message of Medjugorje is not saying, pray the rosary every day. It simply is not saying that. Okay, so I actually didn't mention the third of the principles. We can see it in our list there about persecution of the church, of wars, and of annihilation of nations. How does that feature at Medjugorje? It's in Fatima. It's part of the second secret about Russia uh, spreading their errors. That there will be persecution. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Many nations will be annihilated. All stuff that's going to happen before the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. And because Medjugorje is seemingly in that gap, uh, of prior to the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, the messages you would think should be about those things that Fatima has said are going to be occurring prior to the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. And of course, me there's continuity insofar as Medjugorje was in a war-torn country. Medjugorje, the apparitions there, took place during the war between the different countries that made up uh, Yugoslavia. And so Our Lady does mention 
war actually though only a couple of times literally two or three times does she mention war and she does mention it in relation to prayer and fasting so maybe i'll save that for the the next one on the on the set of fatima principles in terms of persecution of the church annihilation of nations the holy father having much to suffer there is nothing okay and even though this has been a terrible time of persecution of the church both from within the church persecuting true followers of the catholic faith and from without from the wicked religion of islam our ladies never said anything about the poor plight of the suffering christians in the middle east and in africa suffering at the hands of jihadis okay let's move now to the second last one prayer and penance for the conversion of sinners and here we have that message about war and fasting it's a message that you'll probably all be aware of because followers of medjugorje are quick to tell you that our lady has said that fasting can avert natural disasters and can stop wars and i guess you could say that is related to prayer and penance for the conversion of sinners in some way because war is ultimately due to human sin our lady told that to jacinta in lisbon mother godino says that war is a punish mother godino says our lady told jacinta war is a punishment due to sin so prayer and fasting stopping sin seems similar to the message of fatima although it's only twice in a thousand five hundred apparitions how about penance more generally yes our lady does mention penance at medjugorje she mentions penance 26 times and she mentions fasting a lot of times 110 times probably if you really wanted to say what the message of our lady of medjugorje is and maybe i should do a video on this one looking at the concordance and getting what seems to be the key messages but in this video i'm comparing to fatima fatima our lady never really mentions fasting she mentions penance doing sacrifices for conversion of sinners but she never mentions fasting at fatima really but at medjugorje 110 times our lady mentions fasting but she never mentions fasting about converting sinners except for that kind of one about ending wars and stopping natural disasters which in some way is about conversion of sinners but she does ask for fasting what is she asking us to fast for it seems like she's saying that fasting is important because it helps you to pray better it helps you to become free from satan's influence it brings grace in your life and those around you and it kind of fills you with interior peace there's nothing like jacinta's attitude of doing penances to save souls from hell to convert sinners and this leads us on to the final point of fatima the final of the principles of fatima that i've outlined here which i summarize in the fatima prayer oh my jesus forgive us our sins save us from the fires of hell that save us from the fires of hell element is a big part of the fatima message it's the first secret of fatima and in the lives of the children it rocks their lives certainly the first secret the vision of hell it's essential to the fatima message you have seen hell the place where poor sinners go god wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart even the first thing that jacinta that, that lucia says to our lady i would like you to take me to heaven and that whole discussion is about heaven and hell isn't it what about medjugorje in my previous video i said that our lady had never mentioned hell and i've got to say i was wrong because when you take father rene laurentine's analysis of the messages there are three messages where our lady mentions hell at medjugorje the first one in 1981 our lady says do not be afraid i've shown you hell so that you may know the state of those who are there she it's kind of similar to what our lady said to the children at fatima you have seen hell the place where poor sinners to go to save them god wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart it's similar but it's actually completely different at medjugorje i our lady says do not be afraid i've shown you hell so that you may know the state of those who are there 
Mm, it, it's not the same at all, really. It lacks a punch. Our Lady was so sorrowful when the children looked up to her at Fatima. And the children themselves, they said they would have died had Our Lady not by a miracle preserved them. Okay, and then the next time in 1983, the only other occasion or the only other two occasions are, first of all, where Our Lady says, yes, hell is where people are there because they've freely chosen to go there. And then finally, in 1983, Our Lady says, yes, hell, it exists, but most people go to purgatory. And since 1983, there has been no mention of hell in any way, shape or form in Medjugorje. And that was a big part of the Fatima message. And it's just absent at Medjugorje. OK, so now we've reached the conclusion point. As we look over the seven principal elements of the Fatima message, let's look how I've graded it. The first one, the devotion to the Immaculate Heart. Is that there at Medjugorje? Partially, not really, but partially. The second one, Russian will spread her errors, followed by the consecration of Russia and her conversion. Nope, not there at all. Until then, the persecution of the church, the Holy Father, the annihilation of nations. Nope, not there at all. The next one, the communion of reparation on the five first Saturdays. Nope, not there at all. The next one, pray the rosary every day. Our, lonely, Our Lady only ever said pray the rosary every day once at Medjugorje. And maybe she's kind of encouraged the rosary about 20 times, but not 100% like at Fatima, not by a long stretch. Next one, prayer and penance for the conversion of sinners. Our Lady has never said, pray and do penance for the conversion of sinners. And finally, the Fatima prayer, or a repeat of the Fatima prayer, save us from the fires of hell. No, there's no petition at Medjugorje, save us from the fires of hell. All Our Lady says at Medjugorje about hell is, yet people go to hell because they've freely chosen to go there. But most people go to purgatory these days. So there we have it. The message of Fatima compared with the message of Medjugorje. Is Medjugorje a continuation of Fatima? Not in terms of the message. Absolutely not. I hope I've demonstrated that to you. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.